This is the time of year that I get very nostalgic, given that I was born in Iran. My father grew up just three blocks away from the Kever of Esther and Mordechai, which until today stands in the city of Hamadan. Many people refer to Hamadan as Shushan, but in reality, uh, the story of Purim took place in Shush, which is about 120 miles south of um, Hamadan, where Esther and Mordechai are, are buried. I have such vivid memories of visiting the mausoleum there, uh, particularly leading up to Purim. I remember uh, people used to take on extra fasts, and the excitement was building. And I remember on Tanit Esther being there as people started uh, filing into the courtyard, the big courtyard that's outside. And they would first go to the area where you can light candles and, and pray for all sorts of things. People would pray for health and Shiduchim and Parnassah, of course. And uh, the, again, the momentum and, and, and the feeling was building up all day towards the evening where they would bring a Megillah. Um, people get inside, would go inside. There was a bit Knesset inside where they're buried and they would hear it there. If not, the spillover would be outside in the courtyard. Uh, it was very touchy because you know you had to balance out celebrating but not over celebrating because we're still in a Muslim country and you, know, you always have to be careful even at that time, the time of the Shah, which were better times, but you know, the Iranians um, knew how to you know play it just right. And as it would get close to the evening, uh, the women would start bringing special foods to break the fast. One particular food that was my favorite as a child was halva. Now that's not the halva that we buy today in the stores. It was made out of rice and flour and we put in nuts and pistachios. Remember they would cut it into uh, in triangle shapes and that's such a great scent, a delicious scent. I think from the rose water that they would use. Uh, they would pass around besamim and, and a bottle of rose water to make brachot. They, they wanted everyone to say amen. And also um, pleasant scents are good for the neshamot. And since they were praying that day, and they were remembering the deceased as well by the candle lighting area. So they were handing out uh, besamim and rose water for people to make uh, brachot. Um, I've mentioned before that another vivid memory is the, that the stone door, that solid big door that led into the mausoleum, where it was so short, you know, and the reason for it was that you should come in and come in, you know, um, bowing down and, and showing respect. So as a, as a little kid, I walked straight through, but, you know, my parents uh, had to kind of bend as, as they came in. So I, I, think, of, uh, I think of that door. There were all sorts of skits being put on where I was being recruited to play either Mordechai or another character in the Megillah. Um, and the day itself, when the day of Purim arrived, the people just walking in the streets, as we do today, from one house to the other, but, you know, not the processed, commercialized Mishloch uh, Menot baskets that we give each other. You know, everyone was famous for something, you know, something that they made that was special. And we would bring it to our suda, to our meal, and we would eat it together with our suda. Sadly, today, um, there, there are not too many people left in Hamadan. They don't have a, a minyan, so the Megillah is not being read, and they need to go to the next biggest city uh, to celebrate and to read and uh, to have their suda. We know that Purim is such a special day of tefillah and for me, you know, to tap into my, to my roots and, and to be able to use it as a day that I don't take for granted and ask for a special, uh, special praise on this day. So in our family, this is a day that we certainly mark on our calendars and, and look forward to.